everyone, and welcome to another episode of CUDA Crash Course. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be looking at how do we work inside of a Linux environment and use CUDA. So CUDA is what, uh, or a Linux environment is what I typically use when I'm doing all of my work, even if my uh, videos up to this point have been in Windows. So uh, this will likely be um, an alternative if, say, you don't want to be using a Windows machine or you don't like Visual Studio, or maybe most of your development, say, at work or for your projects in a Linux environment. This should help you out, kind of like the setup video I did for Visual Studio 2017 did. So let's just go ahead and jump straight into it. We're going to be having a, ver a fairly simple example today, which is with um, Vector Edition, the good old Vector Edition, the hello world of CUDA programming. So as we can see here, there's very few changes here. Um, so we don't need to include CUDA runtime.h or uh, device launch uh, parameters.h uh, in Linux. Uh, those are just things we don't need to add uh, when, uh, when we're compiling. Uh, so then what else do we need to know? So the rest of the kernel is exactly the same. So we'll just calculate a global thread ID, make sure that it's within the number of threads or within the dimensions of our vector, and then we'll just add the elements together. Uh, all the allocation exa is exactly the same, so CUDA malloc is the same, CUDA mem copy is the same. Uh, we'll add, oh, launch using vector addition uh, with the normal uh, kind of triple chevron uh, launch uh, syntax, and then our parameters over here. We'll copy back our result. Make sure there's no errors with this assert, and then we'll print complete successfully if it passes. So that's going to do it for that example. So how do we actually compile this? That's the interesting part. So we can call the NVIDIA compiler directly, called NVCC. If you don't have the CUDA toolkit installed, uh, you need to make sure first that you have the driver installed. So uh, you're going to need to talk to your GPU, so you're going to need the driver. So first you have to make sure you get the driver, and you can download that from NVIDIA's site. You can also download the, uh, the CUDA toolkit from NVIDIA's site, or uh, alternatively, you can uh, do, run, just run sudo apt install uh, nvidia-cuda-toolkit, and so that will download the toolkit for you. I did it just a few minutes ago, so it's already uh, on mine. So it gave me toolkit version 9.1. If you want the later versions, say 10.0 or 10.1, you can get that on uh, on the NVIDIA page itself, but for something as simple as vector add, it's not going to make a difference. Okay, so that'll make sure, that'll make sure that we have NVCC on the system and that we can use it. So where is it? So it's going to be in the bin directory and um, the lib uh, the libraries say uh, uh, the libraries for say Kudinin or Kublas or Kuran that we've seen prior uh, prior to this they'll be in a spot that we can reach them uh, as well. So let's go ahead and compile this. It'll be just like any C or C++ compilation, but we'll use the NVCC compiler. Uh, so this will compile both our host code and our device code. Uh, so we'll do NVCC-O vector add, our input file vector add.cu, and we should get, there we go, our vector add uh, executable out. Now, like I said, we can also, if say we had a kublas function in here, we could link it against a uh, kublas like this. So the dash L just says link against, and then what the library name is. So the actual library name is lib kublas.so, but um, the dash L says, you know, I know that's going to be a library, so I don't need the SO, and every library should start with lib, so I don't need lib. So I can just leave it in that format. So I can link against kublas. It's not going to do anything because I'm not actually running any kublas functions in here, but I could. Okay, so that's going to do it for that. There's another number of other utilities, including CUDA, uh, CU object dump, which is uh, uh, we can use to get out uh, the device code in here. Uh, so let's see if I can do, say, dash ptx. Oops. So I can get out the ptx, which is the uh, uh, that's the virtual instruction set for NVIDIA GPUs. And then alternatively, if I uh, compile it with the uh, uh, with the embedded SAS code, so this is for the specific SM30 architecture, 
uh, this is going to be the actual machine ISO. So this is closed source. So you can look up uh, PTX and look at the instruction set on NVIDIA's pages, but uh, this these instructions are closed source, but they're not terribly difficult to read. Uh, you can see they load in uh, a couple things. So they'll load in, say, CTA ID, which is your thread block. They'll load in a thread ID dot X. Um, they do some uh, predicate setting here, and then they do uh, uh, multiply and adds. Uh, so this is an integer scaled add. They do some moves, etc. So it's not terribly complex of code uh, for a simple function like this. It gets a lot more complicated if you start writing uh, more complex programs, of course. All right, so let's actually run this, make sure that it works. So there we go. We didn't hit the assert, or we didn't fail on the assert, so we completed successfully. So another question is, how do we actually profile this thing? So profiling is actually fairly easy. There's a uh, profiler built in. Uh, uh, there's a profiler built in that we can use, and it's called uh, nvprof right here. Uh, there's also a visual profiler called uh, NVIDIA Visual Profiler. So we can launch that by just doing nvvp. Let's see, there we go. So there's a visual profiler as well. So uh, a lot of times though, we don't need to uh, uh, even run the visual profiler. A lot of times the uh, command line profiler is good enough and it gives us the same information that we would get out of the visual profiler, but oftentimes a lot faster because we don't need to dig through a, a uh, uh, if we know what we're doing, we don't need to dig through all the windows and the options. So we can do some basic profiling by calling nvprof and then just dot slash or vector uh, vector add. And so we get a couple things here. So we get a percentage of time spent on the different GPU activities, the mem copies, and then the kernel itself, as well as the time spent on all the other API calls. Uh, if we want some more uh, detailed information, we can also uh, pass in some options. So of course there's a dash H parameter, which tells you all the options we can give to the profiler. Uh, in this case, we'll use dash dash print GPU trace. And let's clear that and run that up top. So print GPU trace. Uh, let's clear that again. So print GPU trace will give us a number of things. So it'll tell us the start, the start time, how long it took, the grid size, block size, number of registers used, shared memory. Uh, it'll tell you things like throughput, uh, things like the device that it ran on the stream, and then the actual operation. So whether it was, as I said, like a mem copy, or if it was a kernel itself. And there's a number of other things we could do. So we could format this as a comma state uh, variable, variable output. So if we dash dash CSV on top of that, we get it as comma separated variable, and then let me make sure how to do this so we'll do dash h so if i do that again and uh, i do dash dash log dash file and then i say test.csv that will output my uh that csv oops wrong thing uh test.csv that'll output it to a comma separated variable file. So if I wanted to say, feed this to a Python script or import this into Excel, it'd be very easy to do. And I could start doing some say, data analysis on this. All right, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this video. As always, you can feel free to go to github.com slash coffee before arch for all the other uh, repositories uh, for the other series that I do uh, on this channel. And so we've got stuff on data, C++ data structures, basics of C++ and Python. Uh, we've got stuff on the MIPS assembly language. Uh, of course, this series, CUDA programming, as well as some parallel programming in C++. So we're at CUDA programming for CUDA crash course. Uh, we've got all the other videos, as well as the files associated with the other videos over here. Uh, my setup and then feel free to email me if you have any questions or any ideas that say you have for a video or you can just comment them as well so uh, if we go to the example we did today under Linux vector add here's our file for today so feel free to download this or any of the other examples and play around with it have some fun and uh, as always I hope you have a nice day